Today is our final chapter, chapter 27. Chapter 27 is kind of tricky for, for many of us, including myself, because it, re it relates to how they would um, bring their offerings to the temple, and it relates to the materials and the value of the animals, the person, uh, of what is charged and vowed to be given to God. And that is what was given as instructions by God to Moses. And it is also being said at Mount Sinai. And so this, this is an interesting thing because at the time of Mount Sinai, there was no tabernacle. And so it was given as a precursor, a, a, a forward instruction. And so he says, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, so when a man uh, mix, uh, consecrates by vow, now consecrates by vow means to, to, to how should I say, to, to vow uh, beyond their means. Okay? To make a vow beyond their means uh, with regards to the, uh, and this is to be given to God, right? To be given to God. Uh, and this is with regards to, well, this, this word here. I would say this is with regards to nefesh. As you know, nefesh can mean two things. One is uh, a person, okay? And the second is animals. So in this instance, chapter 27 has to deal with the valuation of these persons or animals that is given to consecration, means uh, to be uh, to be set apart for God. So, so that, that is a, 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 a promise, right? So when you consecrate to God things which are, uh, are, are extraordinary, whether animals or persons, then there seems to be an option to redeem back. Redeem back would mean that um, uh, I don't want to concentrate uh, consecrate to God, I want to take it back for myself. And so there is a value to pay to redeem. Now, the word to redeem means to bring back to its original uh, place. And so in verse 3, there seems to be a valuation. The valuation is an estimation And this estimation is done by the priests. And this, this estimation is done so that uh, the, 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 the nefesh that was uh, set aside for God can be redeemed. And so in the redemption value, there must be a determination. Somebody needs to determine how much is it worth so that you can redeem it back? And it says here, a male from 20 years old to 60 years old is 50 shekels of silver according to the shekel of the sanctuary. So there is a valuation where the temple or the tabernacle uses to weigh the money. Shekels, if you look at this, is actually a weight. Uh, it is a weight compared to grain. So it can have a weight when you compare to silver, uh, compared to copper, compared to grain. So a shekel is actually a weight. So in the good old days, money is not printed paper. Uh, and in this case, shekels would be, um, I'm not sure whether it's coins, but right now it's coins. But it could be a, a weight measured in the temple that is an official weight. So this would be the shekel of the weight of the temple, the sanctuary. And so here would be 50 shekels of silver. 
So you must bring enough silver to be equivalent to 50 shekels. In general, uh, a silver shekel is equivalent to 132 grains of wheat. Uh, and that would be generally the, the weight of silver. Uh, and here it says if it's a female, then it's 30 shekels. So you have 50 shekels for the male and 30 shekels for the female. Now, it is not a market value to sell a person. This is a redemption value. And so that people will understand that when you want to take this back from the temple, or uh, take this back from the consecration for other purposes, then you have to redeem the person. In this first verse 3, talk about 20 years old to 60 years old, this is the age of a functional male. Uh, in the book of Numbers, they would actually number men 20 years and above because they are the ones who can go to war. When you're below the age of 20, then apparently you are still considered below the age of accountability, that you are not useful for normal uh, temple use. So for the women, it is 30. For the men, from 20 to 60s, will be 50 shekels. So that's as far as we have gone. Now when you come to the child, if there was a child that you consecrate, five years up to 20. Anything below that uh, will be in verse 6. So if it's five years to 60 for the male is 20 for the female is 10 shekels. Now, why is it lower? It's because um, they are not of the age where they can actually make decisions. And hence, it is you can still redeem back at a lower value until they have arrived at age 20. Verse 6, if it's just a month old up to five years old, then the valuation of the male shall be five shekels of silver, female shall be three shekels of silver. And from 60 years and above for the older, for the male, it is 15 shekels, for the female, 10 shekels. So what we can see is the value of 20 to 60 is the one that is most functional. Uh, for the purpose of God, above 60 and below 20 will have a different valuation of a redemption. Now, there is a time when if they are too poor to pay the valuation or the estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest and the priest shall set another value for him. Now, this in verse 8, uh, talking about another value, uh, it is to, to, well, if you look at it, God is a just God. And so there must be an ability for him who has vowed uh, to, to assign a value according to their ability. Okay, so this is about justice. Now we look at verse 9. Verse 9 is the other kind of nefesh. It would be an animal. So verse 9 talks about, say, a cattle in this case. That men may bring as an offering to the Lord, that anyone gives to the Lord shall be holy. See, when you give something to the Lord, it is a holy animal. He shall not substitute nor exchange it, good for bad or bad for good. If he exchange, then all exchanges shall be holy. So the one he takes back is also holy. Now, if it's an unclean animal, and this one you must be careful, when you talk about unclean animal in the context, it is with regards to blemish. It doesn't mean that if somebody brings a pig for an offering as an unclean animal, okay? 
which they do not offer as a sacrifice to the Lord, he shall present the animal to the priest if he wants it back, and the priest shall set a value. This is important because the valuation is given by the priests. The value, whether good or bad, the priest himself shall value, and that will be it. But if he wants at all to redeem it, then he must add one-fifth to the value. That is 20%. And that seems to be the way that uh, once you have consecrated and you want it back, that is redeemed, then you must pay a, a, a somewhat of an interest, I think, if that's what you can see. Now, in verse 13, when he says to redeem, it, it, I think we need to be careful and, and we need to understand uh, what that means. It means to, to um, to bring back, how should we say, huh? mm, we need to redeem back or to assign back. To former owner. And that's redemption. To bring one back uh, to himself. And then you, there needs to be a payment for this. And so this is like a buyback of a property that has been assigned to God. Now, besides animals, the person can actually dedicate his house. Verse 14, when it says to dedicate, it means to, to make holy his house for the Lord. Then the priest shall give an evaluation and estimation for it, whether it is good or bad. As the priest values it, that will be the value. If the one who has made holy the house wants to redeem it back, bring it back to himself, right? Then he must add 20% of the money of the valuation and it will belong back to him. In verse 16, it talks about a man who dedicates, who, who makes holy uh, a part of his field, of his possession. He may have a field. And then the valuation by the priest shall be according to the seed for it. A homer is a, 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 a quantity. Uh, this is in verse 16. Homer, homer will be a heap. That would be approximately 300 liters. Okay. Of barley seed shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. If he dedicates his field from the year of Jubilee, according to your valuation, it shall stand. What does this mean? Is that for 50 shekels, it will be for 50 years, right? From the year of Jubilee. If he dedicates his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon to him the money due according to the years that remain till the year of Jubilee. And it shall be deducted from your valuation. If he who dedicates his field ever wished to redeem it, then he must add one-fifth so that 20% shall do that. Now, this is what is important. If he dedicates his field, and this is how it's, it's done, from Jubilee to Jubilee, and this is 50 years. Okay. Then the priest shall reckon to him the money due according to the years that remain. Right? Means from here, if this is dedicated, the value should be from here to here. And so if you're going to redeem it back, it is this plus 20%. Right, 
But if he does not want to redeem it, or he has sold, so he doesn't want to redeem, or he has sold to another man, then it cannot be redeemed anymore. But the field, when it is released in Jubilee, shall be holy to the Lord and will be a possession of the priests. So what is happening is, if he doesn't want to redeem it, that, that's it. It belongs to God in the possession of the priests. All right. Uh, as opposed to when Jubilee comes, everything goes back to the original owner. Whatever is given to God stays there. Verse 22, if the man dedicates to the Lord a field which he had bought, so he buys a field and says, I make it holy and this is for the Lord, which is not the field of his possession. Because remember, when you buy, it will actually go back to the original owner at the end of, uh, at the year of Jubilee. Then the priest shall reckon him, reckon to him the worth of your valuation up to the year of Jubilee. And then he shall give your valuation on that day as a holy offering to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, then the field shall return to the person whom this man has bought. Remember, the year of Jubilee is a year of freedom and release of land back to the original owner. And all your valuation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, 20 garas to the shekel. We won't touch on this uh, because it's just another valuation. Now comes to animals. For the firstborn of the animals. Now, the, the, the Bible has clearly said that the firstborn of everything shall be the Lord's. So it's the Lord's firstborn. You cannot dedicate what belongs to God. Whether ox or sheep, it is the Lord's. If it is an unclean animal, again, when we say unclean in this context, is with blemish. Then he shall redeem it according to your valuation and add one-fifth to it because redemption always have a 20%. If it is not redeemed, then it should be sold to anyone else according to the valuation. Verse 28, nevertheless, it says here, no devoted offering that, is a, that a man may devote to the Lord of all that he has, both man and beast or field, shall be sold or redeemed. Now, what does this mean in 28? It tells us that everything that has been dedicated to God must be seen as belonging to God. Uh, and it shall not be sold or redeemed. Everything is most holy to the Lord. And there is a ban. Now this word is a ban. Okay, What does a ban actually mean? So you can see the ban from here. A ban is uh, a, a haram, right? This is called a haram uh, or harem. Harem. From the word haram. And these will be the ones that's going to be destroyed. Okay? It was dedicated to be destroyed. So no persons under the destruction may become doomed to destruction among men, shall be redeemed. Now, what does this mean? It's very interesting because the English has a bit of problem. He says, if anyone is under this harem, that is for destruction. If a person is judged to be killed, to be stoned to death, he cannot be redeemed. That is what it means. It cannot be redeemed. No person shall be redeemed. But, and here it says, shall surely be put to death. 
because this is the harem for the person. So if he is already condemned, he cannot be redeemed. That is what this uh, verse actually means. And, and you can see one more time uh, that not everything can be atoned and not everything can be redeemed. And this one is about a person who has been charged and guilty and has a death penalty on him. And so no one can come and say, I want to redeem him and pay for his price because there is no price. Verse 30. In verse 30, it is about the tithe of the land. The tithe of the land is when uh, they were told to give a tenth of whatever they sow or they reap. Okay? About the seed of the land, whether it's wheat or barley or the fruit of the tree. When you tithe, it belongs to God. And hence, it is wholly set apart to God. If a man wants to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one-fifth to it. See, God allows man to, to take back. And if you do that, you must Put one fifth back. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock or whatever passes under the rod, that would be how they would count. When you open the pen, it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The tenth shall be holy to the Lord. That is the tithe of the animal. He shall not inquire, don't ask whether it's good or bad nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, and, and if the, the person says, hey, I want that, that ten, maybe I'll just take this and swap it around, then both it and the one exchange shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. Okay, Whatever has been given to God is considered holy. So you can buy it back, but it cannot be redeemed. You can exchange it, but it cannot be redeemed. That's what it means, right? So let me just highlight this to you. Both it and the one exchange shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed, meaning nobody can buy it back because God wants that animal there because it's the tent. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. And so... In, in this particular chapter, we're talking about whatever has been dedicated to God, set apart for God as an offering, as a dedication, as a firstborn, uh, as a tithe. Then what happens when you say, hey, I, actually, I want it back, uh, whether it's a person or as an animal, you know, I, I, I want it back. Uh, God said, well, you've got to put 20% down uh, uh, more for a redemption. But there are certain things that you cannot redeem. So a person who has been condemned to die cannot be redeemed. An animal of a tithe that has been given can be exchanged, but cannot be redeemed. Redeemed means take it back by giving an equivalent amount of silver. Okay? And with that, we end the book of Leviticus, chapter 29. Any questions? This chapter is a bit... Difficult because yeah. we're not used to this uh, redemption thing. No. Pastor, when, when a person is uh, considered dedicated to God, that means he's uh, like brought to the priest and said, I, I will offer this child to God, yes. is it? Yes, for God's use. I think you can see an equivalent story in uh, Samuel. Samuel, okay. So it, it's a bit like the Chinese, they will bring the child to the temple and say, I, 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 will, I will leave this child with you. So it's like dedicated to the temple. Uh, yes, yes. And then in this chapter, that person or whether it's an animal or land can be redeemed with yes. money. Correct. With a uh, silver. Uh. Yes. Mm. That is how it's done. Because something may happen to the family, something, something may happen to the economy, the financial, um, whether he gets richer or poorer or he has a need for the person, 
uh, and hence um, they, they, God can allow a release mm. under these circumstances. Yeah. And in verse 29, when it's talk about the person being charged of wrongdoing, that means after the, the person has been dedicated to God, and then only the person went and did something wrong, so that person cannot be redeemed. Yes, is that is absolutely correct. This person has been dedicated and he has been is guilty and he is doomed to destruction, meaning he has to be executed. He cannot be redeemed. He shall surely be put to death because the judgment of God cannot be annulled in that sense. So redemption is only meant for things and people uh, that is allowable for redemption. So the like, for example, the animal tithe can be exchanged, but it cannot be redeemed. This person under this ban to be executed cannot be redeemed, right? So here, that's how it goes. But why the ban? Ban here is a, it's just a, a word, a Hebrew word is karem, that he is assigned to be destroyed. Assigned mm. to be killed, executed by capital punishment. Mm, stoning. Uh, either stoning or, or uh, hanging or whatever that may be. Mm. Uh, under that circumstance, uh, God says this person cannot be redeemed. That is what this... Yeah, this then how shall, Moses, how shall Moses know? Oh, uh, no, no. This is the one that has already been dedicated and... Uh. And during his lifetime, he did something that is judged to be executed. Oh. You know, whether he has uh, blasphemed against God or he you know, does some of these things which, you know, he will be cut off or he'll be stoned to death. Mm. Well, nobody can come and say, hey, I want to buy him back. You know, I want to redeem him. God says, cannot. Oh, uh. okay, got it. Otherwise, that will be an escape clause <laughs> for <laughs> somebody to be executed, right? Mm. What about the land, the piece of land? Uh, when the land is dedicated, it is an empty, barren land. And then when they want to redeem, the land maybe has been planted with fruits, uh, with trees that bear fruits and all that. Mm. So it when they matter. want to redeem, it will be a different value. No, 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 no. All the redemption, as long as it can be redeemed, it would be the valuation plus 20%. It doesn't matter what happens to the land. And the man who is near 60 compared with the man who is 20, of course, I think nobody will go and retreat the man of 60. Oh, they, they, they would. I mean, for whatever reason, they would. But remember, it is between 20 and 60. So it doesn't matter whether you are 59 it is the same valuation. Oh. Then, then after 60? Above 60 and below no 20, uh, that's a different valuation. <laughs> after 60, no more hugger already. <laughs> uh, because, um, because the people above 60 are, are not as useful. Mm. So it is not about a personal worth. It is just an assignment of a value. So that when the time comes, if your family members want to redeem you back, uh, oh. they can. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, you have a child and you want to dedicate him to God. And because you have many children, so it doesn't matter. But mm. after a while, say, hey, oh, my, my, my children died. And, and my only son is now uh, dedicated. So I want to redeem him back. So, that's why you redeem. Mm. And whoever that they want to dedicate to God, so that person has to be holy, has to be of... Uh, uh, no, uh, no, that person is just dedicated. That's it. Because animal is no, no blemish. Huh? Ah, so animal man is no blemish. Uh, for a person, good question. I don't think we have seen it here, but... Perhaps that's true. It needs to be unblemished. 
I, I believe yeah. if, if for animals, like you said, mm. uh, if for animals it needs to be perfect, uh, so should a man or a woman. So if they have got five children, the one that is handicapped or, or blind, very difficult to take care if they dedicate to God. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. But, God but, but I mean, one thing for sure, but this, this chapter does not spell it out. Mm. Does not spell it out. Okay. okay. All right. With this, we end. Um, next week, there will be a new uh, Zoom link. And I'll post it up. Monday, right? Monday or Tuesday? Right? Uh, Monday, Monday. Monday. Okay. Monday. It will be all in the new chat group. Okay. So tomorrow, no hmm? class? Huh? Uh, no class. We'll take a break. I need a break. Mm. <laughs> okay. So yeah, possibly a break. Start, yeah, too. Uh, yeah. We start back on Monday. On Monday. Uh, with, uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye bye.